Hi everyone, here's Camille, and today we'll discuss controversial rings of power, or rather just Numenorean armors we've seen so far in promotional materials. And is this going to be another rant video, which seems to be around 99% of rings of power content on YouTube? Sort of, <laughs> but not as harsh as most of them. And yes, so we'll discuss Numenorean armors and basically what we know about them so far. So um, we've seen a few pictures or like even like a few second clips from trailers uh, depicting it and it's mostly a variation of scale armor. And does it look good or bad? To be honest, both. Um, when it comes to actual like, let's say like overall design or shape and so on, it's I would say rather good as in um, it does not fall into most of fantasy tropes of being like super bulky and like not really fitting the wearer or like being hardly practical uh, and this is this, this is nice like um the, you can see the even like on the, the picture behind me like the uh, the armor like fits the wearer it seems to be functional you should you will be able to move it to it it's not too bulky like even in famous pauldrons are fine like if someone would ask me like hey show me good fantasy pauldrons and i would show like Look at look at this. This, this, this. It's fine. Um, it's not great, but it's fine at least compared to let's say Warhammer 40k, uh, which just loves huge pauldrons. Although they have a specific role there too, uh, like explanation why they are so big. Um, and yeah, so what is bad about it then? Well, I mean. Going back to pauldrons, as you can see, like, okay, they are fine, like, they are not too big, they seem to fit the, the shoulders, but um, they really do not cover, like, armpits too much, which are not even, like, protected by mail or anything, um, so this seems to be a vulnerable spot, um, and uh, the material of them looks bad, like, it's, I, I guess it's supposed to be, like, iron or something like this, but it's, like, plastic leather something and the color scheme is just horrible because it's like all white and because of it uh, the show also got like even more criticism and uh, because it looks like some of the scales are just like painted on a cloth which no it's not a like um, it's not scale it's just unfortunate <laughs> um, decision by costume department that they picked basically like um, quilted tunics to be worn under armor, which again is a good choice to use under armor, but um, it has a pattern that looks a bit like scale, and because it's of the exact same color as scale armor, it looks as if it's like blending in together and then makes it look cheap, which also is like again like an under issue, like it does not look really like elaborate, uh, which again is not bad, like it's simple, but at the same time um, functional, which is good, it's great, and yet, like, you look at it and, hmm, you could, you could have done better. Uh, now, going to um, helmets, are they good, are they bad? Again, both, um, which seems to be, like, overall theme of the show, like, it has so many good stuff and so many stuff that you might not really enjoy, but going to the helmets, like, they are good in a sense, they, they resemble, like, a lot of helmets that we, we had in historical um, times, even though it's fantasy setting, I know. Um, but they, they resemble some um, a bit like early Spangen helms, or like even maybe like some of, of Greek helmets too, because of the, the scale um, cheek guards. So they resemble a bit like Chalcidian helmets to me, um, which again is fine, and also like the resemblance to like early Spangen helms. It's also um, um, great, and overall they don't look too bad. Like they are again not too bulky. Looking at you, Game of Thrones, and you huge helmets that would fall off. Um, but if I would criticize it, I would say, for example, cheek guards. While they are fine, they should be probably a bit longer. Like they should actually cover you, even like part of part of your mouth, and actually with, like full cheeks, and even like the, the ends of it could even probably like meet in, in, in the on on your chin. Um, and then be like strapped around it like uh, near like the, the chin and then it would be like really good but it, it, this is not too bad I would again I would maybe make the chiggers a bit longer um, maybe like uh, you know 
um, they should like fit a bit more but again it's not not too bad although you can see like a lot like a lot and nothing like for um, neck which is again okay it's fine because not, not all armors had it although if the guys are like you know heavier boys they should probably have something to cover their um, their necks um, again it's fine and like moving now to a bit more elite armor as you can see on this picture um, the, the base uh, of the armor is like exactly the same as of the riders in the, in the previous background but you can see that the helmet is a lot more elaborate and is it again good or bad? I would say this is this is good helmet again same criticism for the previous helmets maybe the triggers could be a bit better but overall it's fine and okay you can say that it has elaborate decorations on it which again is fine because we have a ton of of historical examples of such helmets now whether they were actual battle helmets or parade helmets is another um, thing to discuss but you always had this one guy this one guy who just had to show off uh, <laughs> so again and if this, this guy is probably going to be like a king or prince or someone don't shoot me I didn't check um, but yeah it's fine for, for such character to have a helmet that really stands out actually I prefer helmets to stand out because it's a really good way to, to show these characters rather than actors uh, removing their helmets in the middle of battle so we can see them more like if you give someone a recognizable piece of gear that person will stand out listen filmmakers um, and again now um, if I would compare it like to historical armors like what would be the comparison uh, I mean it's a scale armor so um, it, it's, it resembles a lot of historical examples, for example from um, Scythian tribes, they they really were into scale armors um, but all again, like it's not just them, like we had some uh, a lot of Chinese um, armors that resembled this one or even like 17th century Polish Karasena type armor worn by some winged hussars which was also like very elaborate um, scale armor and uh, yeah, same same for for already uh, mentioned helm helmets which resemble like Spangen helms or like maybe even some of um, uh, Halcina helmets. But yeah, they are they are great. And how does it actually like compare like to over like history? Like would I say these are armors that could be, for example, displayed outside of fantasy show? I mean, everything is possible, but I would say probably not likely. <laughs> These are like not like there are a lot of flaws to this to these armors and again like we have so many historical examples of a lot better armors that actually look maybe like even less elaborate than this ones like for example you can see a rather decorated like an, um, here like a neck guard uh, which again it, it's fine but we probably could have put more money into making overall design a bit better and this is something I have to really give a shout out to original Lord of the Rings movie which in my opinion did like the best, best, literally best thing when it comes to um, costumes because every armor looks, at least like human armor, so even like elven armors like to some extent they look like plausible, like it looks like something that could be used like for example take a look at Gondorians like their plate armor, even if not in line with the books, which again also Numenoreans would probably have male armor and not scale armor, but that's a separate thing. But if you look at Gondorian armor, their plates, it looks like something that, for example, you could see in let's say like 15th century um, Italy, and it wouldn't really stand out. It would look like a nice piece of um, armor. And similar, if especially if you are going to talk about scale armor, Rohirrim armor, oh my god, it was so good. Um, they mix a lot of um, various elements of them, like like Viking stuff, like Saxon stuff, um, and it looks amazing. Like it, look, even though some of these uh, Rokir armors have like parts of the equipment that probably were not used like together or even at all, but if you if you take a look at it, you can have a, like a feeling like okay, this is something I a Viking or like Saxon could have possibly like worn to battle, and they don't look plastic. Even though probably some of them a bit are, <laughs> especially for uh, for extras in the background. Um, but yeah, anyway, they, they look real. They look um, like something a warrior would use. And for example, if I would take like um, Lord of the Rings armors of Gondorians or Rokirims and uh, distribute them to like <laughs> real like me medieval armies, for example, they they would. Well, 
probably would do fine. Like, of course, they would need to be a bit more polished. Like, especially like with Gondorians, you can see a lot of these armors were like mass produced for extras, and not of not all of them were like super fitting. But aside of it, they were they were amazing. So yes, um, these are this is like my final note uh, about um, Numenorian armor in Rings of Power. Again, it's fine. It's not great. It's it's okay. It, but we'll see um, what um, we'll know about them and like maybe like other pieces of equipment by the end of first season. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know what other armors you would like me to review in either Rings of Power or maybe other movies or video games. And thank you for watching this. Please remember to like and subscribe. And stay tuned for more.